Welcome to the Orthodontics and Summary Podcast, where Farouk brings you the key points and understanding of orthodontic webinars, conferences, and papers in a concise podcast with your host, Farouk Ahmed. Hello all. Today's lecture is entitled Early Orthodontic, Non-Appliance and Appliance Treatment. This is by Uda Schneider. I'm going to be covering part one today, which looks at non-appliance treatment. To summarise, the Orthodontics in Summary podcast is an opinion piece by myself and the Orthodontics in Summary team. And although we try our very best to be accurate, it may not be 100% each and every time. The podcast is not endorsed by the speaker nor institute and is the independent work of myself. So getting on with the lecture. So Uda started off by describing the signs to look out for in the young patient who could benefit from interceptive treatment. And it's looking out for patients who have premature exfoliation of one or more deciduous lateral incisors, gingival recession on the lower incisors, splaying of the maxillary and mandibular lateral incisor teeth, and also looking at ectopic eruption of the first permanent molars. So the four main treatment strategies that she described, watching and waiting, arch development, utilising leeway space, and serial extraction. And the focus of part one is going to be looking at serial extractions. So to quickly summarise watching and waiting, she described the benefits and some of the challenges with it as an approach. She described how we understand that the arch length decreases with time for patients, especially in the lower arch, looking at Bishara's study from the age of eight years and onwards. Also, when we compare arch lengths from 1930s to patients in the 1990s, actually the arch lengths have gotten smaller. So this may not be an ideal option for patients. When it comes to looking at arch development, well, rapid maxillary expansion seems to be a popular topic. But however, Uda described the stability long term wise isn't great for RME. With the paper by Schifferman in 2001 showing 2.4 millimeter relapse post RME. There are other types of appliances such as quad helixes, lip bumpers and removable appliances. However, looking at the study by Little, it showed that 89% suffered significant relapse in the mandibular anterior teeth. When it comes to leeway management, she described how the paper was originally proposed by Nantz in 1947. However, there's a wide range of what we can utilise when it comes to leeway space. And again, looking at the patients from 1930s to the 1990s, we understand that actually we get less space than we historically did at half a millimetre less. So serial extractions was the main part of Uta's lecture. She described it as having some significant advantages. There's no appliances required. It's immediate improvement for the patients and it's cost effective. The candidates, now it's not suitable for everybody and she was quite frank and honest about this. It's for patients who have those classic signs of requiring interceptive treatment. Patients who are going to be bimaxillary proclination cases. Patients who are class 1. Patients with minimal overjet and overbite. Now, she described how, how effective serial extractions are. She described the removal of the primary canines, the Cs, and also the first premolars or bicuspids. We get a reliable improvement when it comes to Little's index of irregularity. It changes from being index irregularity of 12 all the way down to 2.7. And this was Yoshihara's paper from 1999. Uda described the classic protocol for serial extractions. Extraction of the primary canine, extraction of the primary first molar, followed by extraction of the first premolar. However, Uda's adapted this process to mainly carry out extraction of the primary canines only, followed by the first premolars. Now, how does she do this? Well, she takes out the primary canines first and monitors the patient every six months. When the fours erupt, then they are extracted. Uda showed a number of cases which were very well documented and had long-term review appointments demonstrating the serial extraction process. She showed patients monitored for up to five years, showing that no active treatment required or minimal active treatment. And the conclusion was that serial extraction still has a part to play in contemporary practice. It allows patients to have non-orthodontic appliance management of their malocclusion. It is really the adaptation of the eruption guidance principle, which have been long established. It is limited to a selected group of patients, so we have to be careful as to who we instigate this with. But she very much concluded with we should consider this for our patients when the indications are correct, as it has been shown to be such an effective mechanism.
Hope you guys have enjoyed listening to part one. Please do subscribe and look forward to part two, which will follow in the next episode.